technology, but you know, oh, I'm trying. <laughs> you know, I got to try. Uh, I didn't grow up with these things, you know, I didn't grow up with the phones. Um, okay. I think we are. Yeah, I think we did it. I think we're live. Hey, everyone. What's up? My name is Jeanette, also known as Misfit Vegan. I'm on my journey. And today whoo, I got the queen herself. You know her. You definitely love her. Her name is Chef Babette. Hi, Thank how are you doing? Great. Thanks for having me. Thanks for being here. So it's a big honor. And I'm going to jump right in because everybody knows who you are. So I don't have to introduce you. Um, oh. Everybody knows. And so I got lots of questions for you. The first question that I have is how, uh, how much do you work out a day? I need to know because uh, I'm trying to look like you. So how much do you, how much time do you put into fitness today? Well, you know, um, starting about four months ago, uh, because my birthday is in December, December 7th, now I'll be 73. And so I, for a couple, few months ago, I thought, you know, I, there's some work I needed to do on my legs. And I thought, you know, this would be really awesome to see just how much the body will respond um, at my age if I kind of go hard, what I call hard, for like six months. And, and, you know, just see just what I can do in terms of making these legs the way I want them. And so I got started, I got a membership at LA Fitness and got paid for a trainer because I'm terrible doing it on my own. I always need somebody to push me. I'm just really awful with it. And so I, I thought, and then I'll take a really cool picture for my birthday, it'll be my birthday photo and folks can see just where I am now. I used to get up at two in the morning and head over to the restaurant, be there between 3, 30, 4 o'clock in the morning and get my work done. And then I'm out of the restaurant early. But since I had the, got the gym membership, I decided I was going to do five days a week, two hours a day. So what I've been doing for the last four months or so is getting to the gym when they open at five. And I get on a spin bike for an hour and then work out with the trainer for an hour. So I'm two hours a day in the gym. And then I head over to the restaurant uh, to um, prep the food because I do all the food there. And um, so that's kind of why I'm, I wake up at two o'clock. It's always a, a bathroom run. And so I just get my day started then. But yeah, I'm two hours a day, five days a week with a trainer. Incredible. So right now. <laughs> so incredible. So you're doing an hour cardio and then I'm guessing the other hour is more strength training. Yes. Yes, exactly. Yes. Yeah. Okay, guys, that's all we need to do. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you guys now- are- you don't need that much. And I'm trying to do what I'm doing, you know, in a short period of time, normally an hour at the gym is cool. Uh, but, uh, yeah, that's where it got. I'm excited for this. I'm excited for this birthday photo now. Don't tease us now. Okay. We're waiting for it. So now, um, I'm, my question now is, wow. I just, I'm shocked that you said that you're like, you need a trainer. Like I always thought like people that look like you are just like so motivated to work out. Love I am it. ready to work out, but I won't go as hard as I will when I have someone motivating me, pushing me, you know, yeah. and I'm always going to move. I'm always, but I, I always figure out how to get myself a trainer. You see the greats, they know they need a coach. They need a trainer. Need a coach, yeah. Yeah. The girl, all the greats. They, yeah, that's a secret of theirs. So thank you for sharing that. <laughs> And now when you're building muscle, do you think that you can build muscle and lose fat at the same time? And the question is, did you like do anything different to your diet? Did you increase protein or anything like that? You know, no, I I really didn't. I, um, wow, that's a good question. I I've continued to nourish myself exactly the same way. I'm not like all freaked out about protein. I'm not that girl. I do see Moss a lot. I love the E3 Live. Um, there are products that I take that I'm sure I'm getting everything I need to get. Um, 
I don't have a primary care physician. I never get sick. I'm just in really, really, really good shape. So the whole protein thing, I don't know. It doesn't keep me from creating what? muscle. I, you know what I mean? At 73, I, I, um, I'm sure I'm getting what I need. I do take some, uh, omega-3 stuff. Um, but other than that, sweetheart, I just maintain, um, my, my lifestyle. Um, yeah. Yes. And now, so that's secret. Okay. For those guns. Now, first of all, do you have a license for those? What state are you in? Um, okay. Now for, do you focus on weights or calisthenics? What, what do you say is like the better option for people? You know, um, I really, when I went back to the gym, I was thinking if I've only got six months, perhaps I just really need to do work weights. And that's never been something that I've done. You know, I've always just, it's always just been body weight. Um, you know what I mean? And the trainer that I have right now, he doesn't, I thought I was going to be doing a lot of weights, but he doesn't, he doesn't do it that way. He, he's still, it's still a lot of, um, full, full body workouts. Um, and, and I'm not, I'm not using a lot of weight more, my body weight than anything. Once again, plus I just, um, somehow tweaked my left knee and, um, also, I want to tell your, your, your folks when you're young and you can stretch, stretch, um, that was a big mistake that I made. Um, I met my husband in 1990 and this man just turned 75. He can put his big toe in his mouth. He <laughs> is, he always stretched. And I was always up on the couch or in the bed, looking down at him going great stretch. I would never do it. Now at 70, almost 73 years old, stretching is so important. And I did have one of the trainers at the gym say, you know, you, you need to do more stretching and loosen up a little bit before we start giving you all these heavy weights and all that kind of stuff. You hurt yourself. So we're going to continue on with body weight and introduce weights, lighter weights, but yeah, I didn't, I, I didn't, I couldn't, I wasn't physically um, loose enough to really go hard with weights with, without them being worried that I was going to injure myself. What I was saying was I uh, just came back from Columbus, Ohio, and uh, we, we were living on the fourth floor in this, apart, in this hotel, and we decided we'd just take the stairs every day up and, you know. And uh, I don't know, this knee got really weird. And um, so they're really, really, really being careful with me right now. They had, had me, I've never, I don't really have these kind of challenges. And so I wound up having, a, I got myself a heating pad. I have an ice pack. So they said, do a little hot, a little cold. I just ordered myself a trampoline. Somebody said trampolines are really, really good, especially when you get more mature in age and, and, and you need to, you know, get some more fluids loose stuff in that knee. It's feeling pretty good today, but yeah, kids, please, 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 please limber yourself. You too, baby. If, if you don't, if you're not stretching the way you should, please, it's so very serious. Now, this is coming from a 73 year old. You got to stretch. you got to stretch. I don't care what it is. Pilates, yoga. I don't care. Stretch. It's important. You guys, Chef Labette told you to stretch. So now you we're going to start stretching. Gotta stretch. Yeah. So it must be <laughs> like, okay, it must be very trippy for people around you to like, I forget that you're 73 because you look so much younger. Yes. So like, I mean, do you have, okay. Do you have friends that are the same age as you? And like, how's those, how are those relationships? Well, you know, my friends are my friends. And it's also um, the way that um, I deal with the human journey. And, you know, looks are, uh, looks are fine, but quality of life when you get my age is far more important than um, how I'm looking. Now, uh, genetics play a big part in that. My mother made her transition at age 93. Um, she didn't have a lot of lines or anything in her face. She was more of a darker, um, melanated woman. Um, 
And I think with my diet, starting at age 40, and I transitioned to the vegan lifestyle at age 40, um, and, and just really, really taking care of myself and the fact that genetically, my mom just didn't, she was overweight, but in terms of her face, in terms of lines and all that kind of stuff, she didn't really do all that. Now, I, I've got the laugh lines, which I'm happy about because it's an indication that I've laughed a lot, which is awesome. Um, but I, I, I really think um, more than anything uh, to your audience in particular, um, we're all going to look like we're going to look. You know what I mean? And I just, I feel like what we need to do in, in, on this human journey is to embrace the differences as we move through this thing called life. We're living on a planet where we have to deal with gravity. We all have to deal with gravity. I, I don't care who you are, you gotta deal with gravity. Um, so I don't like for us to get so wound up about looks, get excited about me getting my ass down there doing a hundred pushups for my 72nd birthday. That's, <laughs> that's exciting, you know what I'm saying? And um, yeah. we're all, like I said, we're all beauty, beauty, beautiful in our own skin. We look the way we're going to look and um, we need to embrace that. Um, yeah. And, 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 and especially as it pertains to photos and all that kind of stuff. We have so many filters out here. I did a post uh, last week. I think I just took a selfie and just filtered it up and just decorated that face. And I said, just because you see this does not make it real. And I, I think our younger people get a little bit too wound up on looks. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm happy in my own skin, but what I'm more happy about is the fact that if I go down, I can get back up. I don't need a, a, the fire department to come and help me get out of the bathtub. It's more mm -hmm. important to me. If, I, if I've got a line or two, oh, well, I've got it. Um, but I feel good. And I'm loving. So for me, yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> that's more important to me than anything, you know, is quality. So absolutely. And you know yeah. what? When you take care of yourself, and you feel good. You just look better, too. You know, it's a win win. Right yeah. now, um, I want to talk to you about your lifestyle, your diet. Mm -hmm. I'm curious. Um, what does a typical day of eating look like for you? Because I know my audience wants to know. So what do you eat in a typical day? Well, you know, I, I love juicing. Juicing is a big part of, of, of my uh, diet. Um, and I love green, green juices. I got my juicing certificate some years ago from the Juice Guru uh, program. Um, and they've become very, very, very good friends of mine now, which I'm so happy I learned uh, about juicing back then. It's just been a lifesaver. Um, I don't, um, well, what's your, what's your favorite juice? Sorry. Well, one of my favorite juices is cilantro, lemons or lime, whichever your preference, um, uh, lots of ginger and, um, uh, oh, green apples. Oh my gosh. I, I love that juice. So it's cilantro, lemons, uh, uh, um, with, with ginger and green apples. That is such a good drink. But I've you never had use, that. Yeah, you could use however many greens you want to use in there, but that that truly is my favorite. But the main thing is getting enough green, leafy greens juiced up. So I sometimes I, I'm at work with a big industrial juicer, so I can kind of do my thing and do what I want. So I usually make juice for my husband and myself. Um, but yeah, and, and, and I'm not big on um, massive plates of food. So, and he, he is not either. He only weighs 140 pounds. You know, we're very small people. And he, um, like, like, like um, what was I about to say? I, 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 I'll make a handful of nuts a meal. You understand? So I, 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 it's too much to sit like my soul food platter, for instance, on the menu, it's stuff I eat. It's gluttonous as far as I'm concerned. You got potato salad and coleslaw. Even in a, at a black table when we're eating, 
when we're eating soul food, we don't need both potato salad and coleslaw, but we give you that and stuff I eat. Greens, yams, uh, um, um, either uh, barbecue tofu, or you can have the barbecue jackfruit. Uh, we've got mac and cheese, cornbread, black eyed peas. I can't eat that plate of food. That's too much food. So if I decide I wanted to eat some veggies cooked and I just wanted to go get those greens that have been boiled to death. And that's another thing for me. I understand that cooking is our restaurant is a good transition, has a good transitional menu for those people that want to try vegan, but they want to hold on to the flavors. But when you cook everything that you eat, how do you get the digest, I, I mean, the enzymes out of that food when you've, you've raised temperatures over 115 degrees Fahrenheit, you're killing the life in the food. So our thing is to eat more life than death. So that's why I say to you, I'll make a handful of nuts a meal. Or, or we're going to have a big salad. I love bowls. Like I'm, I'm, I'm going to make a bowl after I'm done with this interview with you. And it consists of uh, quinoa, a baby spinach, uh, purple cabbage, shredded carrots. Uh, I've got, um, what's those little mushrooms? The mushrooms that taste real meaty. You know what I'm talking about. Primini? Uh, the, yeah, they're small, but what's the other? Uh, it starts with an S, I think. Uh, shiitake? Yeah, thank you. <laughs> so I'm going to have shiitake mushrooms in there. Um, what else am I putting in there? Anyway, I got some kind of sauce and I, I'll saute a little bit of the green onion and the red onion and, and the mushroom. And then I'll dump everything in one bowl and put a salad dressing on it and whip it up and I'll eat on that for as many times as I feel like I want to. But it's a perfect meal because I've got the greens in there. I've got the veggies in there. I've got the mushrooms in there. You understand what I'm saying? I got a grain in there. It's good to go. It's a perfect meal and it's not heavy, you know? Yeah. And lots yes. of fruit, lots of fruit, lots of nuts. That's And that's another thing I do. I know I'm running my mouth, but like... <laughs> I used to love these. There's this new vegan puff. I forget the name of the guy, but he goes vegan puffs. And it, some of them are spicy. Some of them are like cheese. And Anyway, I love those darn things. But I have an issue, too, with I don't like to accumulate, uh, eat the kind of food that uh, gets me all mucus stuff. Uh, uh, you understand what I'm saying? So I... I so what I do is I get seeds and nuts, and those are my snacks. I'll season them up, make them taste really, really good. So instead of getting something that's been highly processed, what is a puff? How do you make a puff? You understand what I'm saying? There's some processing that goes on with that. And I think sometimes processed food can be a little much in our society. We eat too much of it. So I prefer not to eat out of boxes and a whole bunch of cans. Most of the food that I put my hands on is live food. And yes. so that's my thing. That's my thing. And if you get used to it, your palate just adjusts, right? It just changes. Um, girl, I don't know if you knew that I made a comment on Jillian Berry's, uh, she, she uh, uh, interviewed me and I made this comment that we do not have the gear to get on top of a cow and tear it apart and eat. Oh my gosh. I thought they were gonna murder me. <laughs> the, the carnivores, oh my goodness. It was absolutely horrible. You would think I told them to go out and murder their grandma or something. It was horrible. And, and I'm thinking, you know what? I'm glad it happened because it taught me to stay like you're asking me questions about me. It works so much better with these interviews when you talk about your journey and not try to put off your stuff 
on everybody else. So answering your, cause I, I mean, it was a good, it was a good lesson for me because I don't come on here and, and do these interviews to hurt anybody or to make anybody angry. It's just mm. to share a journey and a lifestyle. And so that's what we're going to do. <laughs> Talking uh, about kind of cows. You're a really beautiful soul. Yeah. <laughs> I feel that from you. I feel that you're just spreading love, positivity, yes, health, fitness, yes. happiness. You know, I, yeah. And that, that video went viral. So I can imagine oh. the amount of people that came for you. Yeah. I saw that. Um, okay. So you're now I, yeah, I saw that. So now I want to switch gears and I'm curious of uh, what is your advice to someone who would love like me to open a plant-based raw vegan restaurant. What is your advice on that? Anybody else watching out there that has a dream of opening a restaurant? How would you start in, if you had to start all over? Um, I, the first thing I would do is um, I would probably get my, my recipes down pat and have them um, priced prior to doing anything. That that right there was something that Ron and I didn't do. We came in, we just cooked food, uh, put a price on that. Put it, you don't know whether you're charging people too much. You don't know whether you're not charging enough. So pricing your product is extremely important. Having some type of a plan on how you're serving that product. But I want all of you to understand for those people that think they wanna go into the business, and it's a much needed business. However, I want you to understand the food business, you are never, ever going to be finished working. Never, never. <laughs> there is always something to do, period. So you can't be a lazy bum. You got to be willing to get in there and do your thing and share. Um, but I think we all need it. We, we need a lot of restaurants. We, uh, you know what I'm saying? Because what's happening on the planet today. And I, I th that, that's, that's what I address more than anything is that we're all responsible for what's happening on, on our planet home. And, and yeah, more raw, more vegan. We need a whole bunch of that stuff so we can get people to understand that it's just food and um, you want to stay in business. You don't, you don't want to start and, and not be able to stay. So know what you're doing um, and just love, the, love it. You got to love it because you're always going to be busy in it. Always, always, always. Mm. Know who your vendors are have that all that stuff set up before you start know who you want to buy your produce from you know what i mean everybody's not honest so um just know what you're doing before you get started and know know what it's going to cost you um that's very important but i, I figure young people they're not going to be like ron and i come on we were old when we started um, when did you when did you start your restaurant we started the restaurant in uh 2008 but we st we got the building in 2004 and we didn't have any money. We were walking down the street. The doors to the building were open. We walked in and we were like, oh, can we have this building? And the guy eventually said, yeah, you can have this one and the one next door, too. Um, and, but he was a great owner. He was a great, great guy that eventually went back to Korea. Um, but, you know, we didn't we just we just felt like we could go in there and just share with everybody what we eat. And that's all we needed to do. We were not business people like that. And that is a, a, a dreadful mistake when you go into business and you don't, you haven't covered, you, you, know, you know what I mean? You haven't dotted all the I's and crossed all the T's. You got to know what you're doing. You're going to have taxes. You're going to have the city wanting you to pay uh, for your uh, uh, appliances every single year. you got to pay some kind of tax on your appliances after you've already purchased them. So it's all, you got to know what you're doing before you do it. Mm, that's that's it. good and advice. Be ready. <laughs> that's good advice. Thank yeah. you so much. Yeah. Um, okay. So my audience would like to know 
what motivates you now to do everything that you're doing? You know, you're busy, you're doing so much and, um, you know, and you're taking care of yourself, you know, at the same time. So what, what motivates you to do everything you're doing? Um, the, the human experience, the journey, the gift of life. Um, I watched my mother suffer, um, uh, overweight, five feet tall, 250 pounds, that sort of thing, double knee replacement, breast cancer, all of those kind of things never could, I mean, got to a point where she always needed something to lean on to walk. And, um, and I, I looked at that and I, and for me, quality was just everything. I just, let, let me close this window. You're good. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, I can hear myself think. Um, yeah, and, and I didn't I didn't want to go out like that. You know, I didn't want that to be my my um experience. And so I began to just really appreciate the experience, the human journey, the walk through life, all aspects of it from the time. I was a, a little girl and everything that I've been through, all the creeps that have been in my life, all the people that were not that great, you know, I, I view them now as human guides, you know, um, you understand, I, I, I never had to repeat anything. Once I learned it, I learned it. Thank you. Even if you were a jerk, I learned it. Thank you. I will never repeat that. So just, just the fact that the intelligence um, gave me an opportunity to experience being a human, part of the human species. And uh, that, that's what does it for me. I, I enjoy this journey. Mm. And, yeah. Yes. Now, you've been through a lot, obviously. Um, yeah. I mean, I've watched a lot of your interviews and people watching have um, you know, watch the interviews, listen to the podcast. Right. And I'm curious, did you ever feel like a victim in your life? I'm sure there was a time when I kind of feel like, mm, but, you know, as I grew older um, and wiser, um, I, I know some people would probably say, oh, I'm not going to say thank you for all. I give thanks to every lesson I've learned on this journey. I give thanks. Um, there was, there was a young, a young girl that I knew um, that her, her stepfather did something really weird with her in the middle of the night and she, she didn't want to live there anymore. She didn't want to. And uh, because of my journey, I could open my heart and my doors to her because when her mother didn't believe her, I believed her. So there's a reason I know it, it's, it sounds so cliche, but I believe everything that has happened to me thus far is, is to put me where I am today. And especially in, with the mindset that I have today. Um, if I had not made those steps, I wouldn't be here talking to you. So there's a reason for everything. And um, I just, um, I just give thanks. I give thanks that I've been through everything that I've been through. So when someone comes to me, I've walked in a lot of shoes. You know, I'm not, I, I don't turn my back. I listen and, and try to understand and feel what they're going through. And then I can embrace them. And if I offer any assistance or help that I can, now, that's truly what I think we should do for each other as humans. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm saddened that um, we operate on such a, a low level, um, a low frequency, I should say, that we, um, we, we dislike each other over the silliest things. And, and then I think if we're all one in this. I mean, we're all expressions of that energy or intelligence that created the whole. And it's just like, we're brothers and sisters in this. And we need to embrace every sentient being in our only planet home. I don't know of any other place but Earth. I just, I, I've only been here. So it's the home that I would love my great granddaughter 
to have available to her, but with love. And we can do better. We can do better at loving each other and being grateful for this journey. Absolutely. We can do better. Ooh, can yes. We? I feel it. I felt yeah. it. Yeah. I have goosebumps because you know what? Yeah. We can all do better. Yeah, absolutely. So now what is a, what, what are some steps that you would recommend somebody take if they wanted to break free from a victim mentality, which obviously you have taken control of your life. You've been so successful in life and you're healthy and you're thriving. And there's some people that feel like that's so like out of their control, you know, with their health and their finances and their happiness and their relationships. How did you take a hundred percent responsibility for your life and your actions and your everything? How did you, is there any steps that you could recommend? You know what I recommend to people? Don't look at me and, and what you see online and think you know my entire stuff because you don't. Uh, I'm not running a hundred. I don't know one human on the planet that is bad in a hundred. I really don't. Uh, I shed a tear every now and then. Every now and then my husband will say something. I don't like the way he says it. And if I don't want to go back and forth with him, maybe I'll shed a tear rather than fighting. Or maybe I'll fight for the second and then have to go back and be like, what a waste. I don't even know what we were fighting about. It's a it's a moment by moment journey. You understand? It's not two weeks from now or a month ago. It's right here, right now. And, and just appreciating the fact that you can think whatever it is you choose to think in the moment that you are in. And vic- being playing the victim, I mean, we, we, like I said, I've done my being the victim before, but it, it doesn't really, it doesn't really serve us. I, um, I prefer to stay present, stay current and forgive and love. It's just far easier. You, you talk about my face. Can you imagine the stuff that I've been through? If I was angry about all of that stuff, I've had somebody pick me up and body slam me. I've had, I've been cold cocked, knocked out. I had my head run through a wall. If I felt like the victim and stayed there, I crawled around on the floor looking for crack cocaine and smoked it. So if I was hung up in being the victim, instead of loving me and and, and the experience, then it, it, the life would just simply stay miserable. And, and, and I, I was created in and of love. That is truly what I believe. Nobody will ever make me believe anything differently. And so with that, I just embrace love and forgiveness because I'm not running a hundred. I'm not perfect. And no one is not the carnivore, not the vegan. (laughs) It's amazing to hear somebody that like, you know, everybody looks at as so perfect, you know, so beautiful, so fit, so successful. And you're not perfect, right? Apparently. Nobody is. (laughs) Nobody. Nobody. Nobody Nobody is. Um, I have a question about food addiction. Have you ever dealt with that? Were you ever an emotional eater? Did you ever feel like you had an addiction to food specifically? My addiction was uh, refined sugar as it pertains to food. My mother put sugar in everything. And her reasoning was because they were sharecroppers. She was born in 1916. And as, as she ate from gardens, a pea would taste sweet to her. Corn was sweet to her. But when she got out here to California, none of that stuff tasted like that. So she felt like she wanted to give us the same experience she had as a kid growing up. And so she just put refined sugar in everything, which is highly addictive. And we don't need it. It makes us sick. Sugar is a a wipeout. My skin was ripped because of refined sugar. I had pimples in my back, my face. Every single month, I broke up with some type of eczema a rash in my face, lips swollen, eyes swollen, 
that 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 was how I was not nourishing myself. And as I began to the first books my husband gave me, and I tell everybody this volumes one and two fit for life by Harvey and Marilyn Diamond and the mucus list diet healing system by Professor Arnold Eret. Once I understood, girl, you don't know what you're doing as it pertains to eating. Read, learn something. That is what we have to do. They, they have not been honest with us. They've not been honest with us because you have big corporations that's making plenty of money. And then you have the pharmaceutical company that's making lots of money. And then you have, after, after we're done with the medicine, then we die. And then you have to, <laughs> so, I mean, you understand it's so wicked. And there's not, much, there's not much money in fruit and vegetables, right? There's but not much. But, who, but who's respo- whose responsibility is it? For me, for me to get up in the morning to go work out at 72 years old for two hours. Whose responsibility is that? Nobody's gonna do that for me but me. And nobody is gonna teach you what you need to know unless you seek the, the, the information. You can go on YouTube and find some of the greatest uh, uh, documentaries that educate us about the food that we're ingesting today. You understand? And, and, and don't be so hardcore that you don't believe anything. Try it for, for a moment. Try, try what, what, when you first went vegan or, or were you always vegan? No, 13 years. Okay. Been vegan. So when you first stopped eating the other way, didn't you just immediately be like, wow, I don't have that anymore. I don't do that anymore. That, all you got to yeah. do is, is not be stuck in life. Move. Don't be stuck. Be open-minded, which is actually uh, not so common, right? Yeah. Um, right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because, well, I mean, recently I was learning about the psychology of this, which is like, we want to be part of a something, of the herd. You know, we want to be part of something, which is such a strong need of ours. And so right. if we think something different, we might not be part of that anymore. Right. And then we might right. be alone. So now that's a great point. So let me, it leads to my next question, which is, um, well, how in the beginning did you deal with like social aspects? Now it's probably easy, right? You're used to it so many years, but how did you deal with in the beginning, you know, socializing as someone who wanted to eat more living foods, a a vegan diet, maybe a high raw diet. How did you do that socially? You know, I made the, the same mistakes most vegans do when they when they're brand new at it. You're always in somebody else's plate. You shouldn't eat that. And you should. Why are you eating that with that? <laughs> you know that we become yeah. Famous, yeah. But and and people are annoyed by us um, yeah. initially because it's not it's not really the I wouldn't say the best way for us to share. No. You know, and people would come in the restaurant. And if they, if they, if they mix something like they wanted one of my desserts and I, and I would be like, now, you know, you shouldn't be eating that with that because that's a bad combination. And, <laughs> and so we've gotten away from that. We're better now. I wait for someone to ask and then I share, you know, so, and like I said, I just, I, I just got beat up over the cow comment so I'm still learning <laughs> well <laughs> I'm still learning honey. that that was a lesson that was a big lesson yes listen what you said was a hundred percent it doesn't matter it doesn't it doesn't matter, matter. it doesn't it matter, does not You're matter right. because the majority <laughs> we are losing our forests over creating grazing space for cows so they, they're trying to feed as many people, and there are so many people on the planet that eat animal flesh. These mm. people took me back to the prehistoric days, baby. They, you know, <laughs> they wanted to educate the dummies. So my point is, share you, Babette. Nobody, <laughs> nobody can go against what you've been through. This is your journey. Keep it there. Mm. Uh, you know? <laughs> yes. Yes. And now, so what is, okay. I only have a few more minutes, but, um, oh, so many questions now. So what is one of the, what of what is one of the biggest lessons you just learned a, another lesson? We're always learning, right? What is one of the yeah. biggest lessons you've learned, um, about, uh, food 
since you started this journey, you've been on it for a while. What is one of the biggest lessons you've learned about food? Well, um, I think the greatest lesson that I've learned about food is, um, and it, it truly was the greatest lesson, um, how to combine it and not to kill it. The, the, you know, I don't, I don't know where else I would get my nutrition from if I murdered every morsel I put in my mouth. And I also am not going to get what I, what I need to get from my food if I'm combining it incorrectly. I understand that if I eat watermelon, normally I eat watermelon on an empty stomach and alone. And I also learned I can ingest the seeds as well. Um, I learned that I don't mix uh, bananas and oranges. That's just not a great combination. I don't eat proteins and carbohydrates together. It's just not a great combination. And I had problems with digestion serious problems. Had I not educated myself though, I would not have known that I'd be taking Tums. Yes, I don't think course. humans need to medicate themselves after they eat. We're the only species on the planet that medicates after we eat. Why? So those are the things that, that are huge to me. How do I eat it? What is the proper way to eat it? Yeah. Yes. Oh, so good. Now, um, where are you based, Chef? Uh, Inglewood, California, right? Los Angeles. Okay. I ask because I would like to personally invite you to the Woodstock Fruit Festival if you're interested. Oh. Where I'll send you an email with all details, okay. but we're having it at the end of Florida. Uh, the end of Florida. I'm so nervous. <laughs> at the end of January in Florida. Oh, my God. But oh, anyway, my- if you want to come for one day, all seven oh days. God. We would love to have you. So oh, I'll send you an email. Send, <laughs> send it over to my, my, my manager, Chris. I will. Absolutely. Yeah. And yes. um, yeah, we'd love, we'd be honored to have you. And <laughs> um, last question. My last question is, what is one message that you would love to share with the world? I mean, you've shared so much in this last, uh, you know, almost hour interview, but what is one message you would love to share with the world that you haven't shared uh, yet? What is one message that you'd love to share with everyone? Um, I guess the, the, the one message, I hope this doesn't come off as dark, but um, I guess the one, the one message is that in 100 years, let's say 115 years, everyone that is existing today will not be existing. That's just a hundred years, you know? We will all make a transition. We will all do that. But for the time that you are here on this planet, understand you too have a star. I don't care who you are. I don't care where you are. We are all have that light. And just lay in that light and just know that you, you are just amazing, just as you are. And when you can do better for the whole, do better for the whole. It's just us being responsible for all of it. And, and um, yeah, that's about it. Just understand one day you will transition and you will not be here. But what are you leaving? What are you leaving? Are you leaving love and light? Are, mm-hmm. are you leaving death and destruction? What are you leaving? So, yeah, mm-hmm. let, let your light shine. This little light of mine, you know, <gasps> let it shine. Yes. I First of all, I want to say thank you very, very much for doing this what interview. Thank you also for stepping into your greatness because I know that you're doing what you were born to do because the way you channel, yeah. I just, it's, this is your flow. This is this your is destiny. And I'm so grateful to get an interview with you. And hopefully one day I'll meet you and give you a hug in person. Um, oh. One day, because you're such a big inspiration to me and, and millions of others. I appreciate and, 
Thank you. Thank you very, very much. You are amazing. So beautiful inside and out. And uh, thank you very much for your wisdom and knowledge. Spending a little time with me today. All right. Have a beautiful day. You too. Thank you. Bye-bye.